Hey guys, so I wanted to show you the dress I have on. This is a dress that I showed in my haul video. Um, sorry, a plane, is, a plane is passing overhead, so I hope you guys can hear me. But I have it on today. It actually fits very nicely. Okay, so this video, I want to talk about my experience being in a coven. Um, I joined a coven a couple of years ago um, because I was curious to see what it would be like to work with people. Sorry, my cat. This is one of my cats. Her name is Cotton. Hi, Cotton. Mama's making a video. Okay, go play. Go. Okay, so um, I joined the coven a couple of years ago and I was curious to see what it would be like to work in a group of people that uh, were like-minded. So that was my main reason for reaching out. I was a solitary practitioner and hadn't really come in contact with um, a lot of people that I meshed with that practiced the craft. To me, um, either they weren't spiritual enough or I just didn't connect with them really. So this coven, I was the youngest one there, but there, the couple of women were close to my age bracket. Um, so after a year of being there, I decided to leave and to go on my solitary path. But I'm, what I want to say is having that experience of being in the coven and seeing what it is to be like to worship uh, the god and the goddess and to perform rituals with other people kind of gave me a different perspective when looking at my, soli my solitary practice because, you know, when I was practicing solitary, it's like, you know, I'm all alone and I wish I had someone else here. Maybe it would be more powerful if I had a group of people uh, to practice with, you know, we could really, uh, you know, raise up the energies. So, um, and I found out that from that experience that actually me practicing as a solitary uh, practitioner was actually more powerful, more spiritual, and I was in more in tune when I was alone. And one of those uh, reasons was because I didn't have to deal with a lot of different energies. Um, and my experience, when I thought I would find people that were like-minded, they were like-minded in a sense because they, uh, you know, knew of Wicca. Uh, they practiced it. They called themselves an elective, elect, uh, eclectic, sorry, group of witches. Um, but when I would, you know, go to celebrate the Sabbaths or these Sabbaths, what I found was, to me, mostly it seemed like a time, you know, to get together, to drink, to fellowship, as they say. But when it came down to the actual ritual, I didn't feel as if everyone's heart was really in it. Um, Honestly, you know, not to down talk anyone or any group, but it just felt as if, you know, it was really a time for more about fellowshipping, you know, drinking, kind of, uh, instead of really being focused on spirituality. And that for me was a downer. And each time I would go, I would say, you know, maybe this Sabbath, or maybe this is Sabbath, it's going to feel powerful and I'm going to feel the energy and everybody will be focused and in tune and you know will make manipulate the energy in such a way that will make things happen and will feel the spirit will all be uprisen you know but I never really got that feeling but I when I practiced solitary I did um, and I think it's because I was able to connect on a deeper emotional and spiritual level me just being in tune myself and me just being fully comfortable and being myself while there it was more about having fun and 
friends. And there's nothing wrong with having fun in the craft, but for me, I'm just such a spiritual person. Um, for me, it's a very serious thing. Um, it's a joyful thing, it's a loving thing, it's a serious thing. And I just think that a certain amount of focus should be used no matter how much fun that you're having. Because, you know, that's how it works. You have to focus your energy on what it is that you want and visualize it in order for it to manifest. And a lot of that wasn't going on there. Uh, and it also felt as if, you know, some of the people weren't really as, as sincere in their practices. And I say that because of some of the things that I saw, you know, a lot of showmanship, a lot of bragging, sometimes talking people down, um, you know, a lot of envy and jealousy. Uh, I had a dream about uh, the coven members, and I had already been going for some time, but I had two dreams. Uh, to show me what were going on, two prophetic dreams. And in one of my dreams, I remember we were casting a ritual and they told me to lead it. So I cast the ritual and then afterwards, the high priestess was reprimanded me for the way that I cast the ritual and saying that that wasn't the right way. Um, and then it was like everyone in the coven just turned against me and there was no love and what I was getting really was a feeling of jealousy because I had done it in a different way and I had done it in a more spiritual way than she had. So that dream was right before a Sabbath celebration that I was um, attending there. So when I w it was when I, I um, and I had two dreams, another dream telling, showing me that they would, uh, you know, kind of be talking about me. So I had went and I left the room for a bit to go to the kitchen or to go to the back room to do something. I think I was uh, going to check my phone. And I knew to expect something because I had the dreams warning me. When I slowly began to enter into the room, um, I heard them talking about me. And uh, they were pretty much like analyzing me, you know, trying to see, like, say what they thought of me. And when I stepped into the room completely, everyone just was quiet, just quiet, just silence. And I knew at that moment that um, what I was told was right, that um, I didn't fit in there and I didn't belong there. Because I wouldn't play into the bragging rights game or I wouldn't try to, ha I wouldn't conform into their little, you know, set ways of having to do it this way, and this way is the only way. Um, and I felt that them, as they were on a different spiritual level than I was on, um, and that those levels really didn't match up. Um, so just being in that kind of environment, having to deal with all those types of people, um, when it comes down to spirituality, I really rather not have to deal with that type of conflict, any conflict at all. Um, I would rather not have to deal with false people. Uh, so in my journey for some people of like minds, I really didn't find any um, that connected on the way that I connected. For fellowshipping, sure, great, but for actually, you know, doing rituals and doing spells and trying to work together and focus to bring things into being, I prefer to do that work on my own because for me, I know that I am comfortable, that I am real about it, that I truly believe in it, that I can truly connect and do it in my own way without having, you know, some odd person staring at me across the room while they should be meditating or just, just weird energy and just weird vibes. Um, yeah, so <laughs> that was my experience there. And they also had a practice of uh, going sky clad. I've never did done that with them, but for me, that looking back at it it's like when you do something like skyclad you really 
are doing that so that you can have no in restrictions whatsoever between you and nature and connect to the universe and i mean there has to be a lot of focus and a lot of spirituality you know nothing perverted but in that type of setting with those with the way that they were i don't i didn't see enough of the serious uh spiritual aspect there to even attempt to do a sky clad ritual with them honestly it would have just been weird Okay, I think I'm going to stop here. So, um, yeah, that was it. Thank you for watching my video. And the Ankh you is actually Egyptian. It's the Ankh and you. The Ankh being the symbol similar to one that you see used for Venus. The circle and then the cross. And that is the symbol for eternal life. So the Ankh you means... Uh, peace and blessings to you so that word actually came from Egyptian lesson uh, language and now it is thank you so thank you for watching my video and uh, until next time peace love and blessings